Welcome to our lecture online and in this video we're going to show you a little bit more about the normal distribution and especially about the normal distribution equation. So like we saw in the previous video, here is your normal distribution, the vertical axis is frequency, the horizontal axis is the value for x. So let's go ahead and let's put x here, so this would be the frequency axis. <clears throat> And the condition is that the area underneath the curve would have to be equal to 1. So that is the condition for a normalized distribution function. Now, notice that this here is the equation uh, appropriate when we have the center located here above the origin or right across the, uh, perp uh, the, the vertical axis, so to speak. Notice that this is the constant before e to the minus x squared divided by 2 sigma squared. And so what we're trying to do here is understand a little bit more about how to interpret this equation. So for one thing, the height of the distribution, of course, depends upon this number right here, 1 over sigma times the square root of 2 pi, all in the denominator. Now notice the square root of 2 pi is simply a constant that can't change, but sigma can change. Sigma can be small, can be large, and so how does your curve change for different values for sigma? So over here I have an example that if sigma is very small, that means the numbers are very closely tied together, then the curve will be much higher at the center and will drop, drop off much more quickly and will not spread out as far. But if sigma is a large number, then there's a wide variation in the numbers, so therefore the central peak is lower and it spreads out over a much larger distance, both in the positive and the negative x direction. Again, what's required is that no matter what the shape of the curve is, the area underneath each of these curves has to always equal 1. So that's why we call it a normal distribution. Now, also, let's play around with some values for x. So let's say that the x goes to 0. Well, x goes to 0. I'm looking at this point right here, where x is equal to 0. And so then e to the 0 power, of course, is equal to 1. And therefore, the function simply becomes 1 over sigma times the square root of 2 pi, which is simply this number right in front of the e to the x function. And so that, again, when x equals 0, then the vertical axis will be equal to simply this number right here, which indicates that this point right here would equal, <clears throat> would equal 1 over sigma times the square root of 2 pi. And again, it doesn't matter what the value of sigma is, the top of the peak always will be equal to that value right there. That's why when sigma is big, the peak goes lower. When sigma is small, the peak goes up higher. Now what happens when we go out to infinity, both in the positive direction and the negative direction? What if x becomes really, really large? We can see that the value for f of x becomes very small. So we can say that x approaches either infinity or negative infinity. Since x is squared, it doesn't matter if it's a positive or negative number, x squared will always be positive. And with the negative in front, there's always a negative. So e to the minus x squared becomes, of course, 1 over e to the positive x squared. And so when um, x becomes very large, it becomes 1 over infinity. 1 over infinity, of course, is... is uh, I got this wrong here. <clears throat> I got to change that e to the minus infinity. Ah, that's better. Yeah, e to the minus infinity. I had a problem on the board here, so that's why I have to correct it. That's equal to 1 over e to the infinity, and of course 1 over a very large number that is equal to 0. So I had that written incorrectly, but now it's correct. So you can see that if x becomes a very large positive number or a very large negative number, e to the minus infinity uh, squared, of course that would be infinity squared, if you want to be, of course, Absolutely correct. Again, makes no difference. Infinity and infinity squared is basically the same number. It's undefined. And so therefore, the function goes to zero. And that's why you can see that the function drops off in both directions right here. Okay, so now let's take a look at the integrals a little bit closer here. So what the integrals here are defined for is we want to be able to calculate the area underneath the curve either the entire curve, which of course we know that's equal to 1, or a section of the curve, maybe from there to there, from there to there, from there to there, however much of the area you want to calculate, because remember, the area underneath the curve represents the probability of certain events occurring. So it turns out that this is kind of a difficult integral to make, and it turns out that the general equation of an integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus a squared times x squared, remember that a squared is equal to 1 over 2 sigma squared, comes right out of the equation right here. Notice that the integral of that is equal to 1 over 2a times the square root of pi. All right, and if we plug in 2a, which is 1 over 2 sigma squared, multiply times pi, we find out that that will always equal to 1 half for this area right here. However, 
if we want to integrate from 0 to b, for example, we want to integrate from here to any point to the right, not infinity, but some, some point anywhere else, then of course the, the solution becomes a little bit different. Notice the general equation has an a here instead of an a squared, where a is equal to 1 over 2 sigma squared. So the solution is 1 over 2 times the square root of pi divided by a, of course a is equal to this, times what we call the error function of b times the square root of a. b, of course, is the limit of integration, <clears throat> and a, again, is equal to this quantity right there. So what is the error function? Well, I'll show you in just a moment. If you're going to now, of course, take our regular function like this and integrate from 0 to b. With other words, let's say that um, I'll use a different color. Let's say that b is over here, and we want to integrate and find out what this area is equal to. <clears throat> that can be done by this integral right here. Now, don't be afraid, because eventually we're going to just look up the values on the table, which is a lot easier, but at least it's nice to know where the equation, where the table comes from. So if we integrate this, notice that this is a constant, comes out of the integral sign, and then this quantity right here, using the same principles we have over there, is equal to this times the error function of b times the square root of a. Now, of course, b is any old constant, and sigma is, of course, the... Um, the standard deviation and now 1 over the square root of 2 is still there and now we have a factor of 2 divided by the square root of pi and of course I should finish the parentheses right here it's also a factor we can't forget this here is representative of what we call the error function and it's kind of complicated mathematics so we don't have to go to the details but this should then be able to calculate the value or the area underneath this normal normalized curve for any value of v. In other words, for any section of that curve, we should be able to calculate the area underneath the curve. And in the later video, I will actually go through the process of calculating it so you can see how the numbers in the table come out to be exactly the same as the numbers you get from this infinite series when you evaluate it. It's kind of neat when you do it and you go, okay, that's where the values of the table come from. So again, in summary, the key here is that here we have what we call a normal distribution. Normal means that we've normalized the area underneath the curve to be equal to 1. We then realize that this here is the equation of that curve. We then understand that there's some general ways in which we can find the area underneath the curve using these integration techniques without going to the details. We can then see if we want to find the area from the central point to some value away from the central point. Let's say x equals b. We can do that by using this integral. The general form of the integral is equal to this in black and then substituting for the value for a and b, a being equal to this, which is, of course, the coefficient 1 over 2 sigma squared. That's equal to the number multiplied times x squared. If we then apply that to our equation representing the normal distribution curve, we can see that this is equal to the result. Now, if we simplify this a little bit, you can see that uh, this square root of pi cancels out this square root of pi, and this 2 cancels out this 2, and this square root of 2 cancels out this square root of 2, and the square root of sigma squared with the sigma cancels out this sigma, and notice we then end up with 1 over the square root of pi times 1 over the square root of 2, because we can factor out a square root of 2. Notice you have a square root of 2 everywhere here. So if we factor that out, we end up equal to 1 over the square root of 2 pi, oh, not 2 pi, but take that back. Um, yes, it is, 2 pi, oh, I was right, 2 pi, times, and now we have this whole quantity right here, which is b divided by 2 times 3, which is 6 sigma, oh, I'm a little bit ahead of myself, b divided by sigma, minus b cubed divided by 6 sigma cubed, plus, because I factored out the square root of 2, we have plus b to the fifth divided by, that would be 40 sigma to the fifth minus b to the seventh divided by, that looks like 348, that's 34 times sigma to the seventh plus minus, and then the infinite series just continues on forever. And so we would be evaluating this for any particular value for b and for any particular value for sigma, which is, of course, a standard deviation. All right, most of you will look at this and go, I really don't need to know that. I can simply go to the table and look at the values. But for those who are interested where it came from, you can now see that this is how they actually calculated the tables. And I'll show you some example in a future video. And that's how we do that.